as some cattle herders from Zhongle are now returning to the state, what will this mean for the population in Eastern Equatoria? Join us as we discuss this and more only on Beyond the Headlines. Our guest on the program is Dr. Agok Paul Tier, the chairman of the Borough County Community. He is based in Juba. Welcome to Beyond the Headlines. Thank you, Eunice Malash. What led to the influx of cattle herders from Jongle into Eastern Equatoria, as well as some parts of Central Equatoria? You see, the, the, the phenomena started uh, not just uh, recently, as the news has been talking about, but starting from 1991, the, the, after the split within the SPLM, SPLA movement, uh, many people in Bor uh, County displaced to, to, to southwest, to eastern, to Equatoria in general. Uh, but of late, of recently, yes, the, the, the impact of a flood in Jongle uh, and then the rampant of diseases has made people actually the cattle headers in Jongle and Patrin Bo be heading southwest to Equatoria, and particularly Eastern Equatoria, Central Equatoria, and then some part of Western Equatoria. So, this, this has happened uh, starting from 91, but of late, uh, two years from now or three years from now, yes, the influx of cow crossing mainly, they were centered in areas of central Equatoria, but of late, they have crossed also to, to eastern Equatoria. So this, 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 this has been challenging for both cattle headers and, 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 and the local population. So that, that, that has happened. It is important to note that South Sudan has 10 states. Among those states is Eastern Equatoria. The state is the home of the ethnic groups such as the Madi, Acholi, Lakoya, Pari, Lotuka, Didinka, Deposa, and Lango. While in Equatoria, some of the ethnic groups include Bari, Loluba, Kuku, Kojulu, Nyangwara, Modari, and Kakwa. There have been allegations that some prominent leaders within the Borg community, politicians as well as military leaders, are the owners of this cattle because there's been such a large influx of the cattle, more than there had been from the past. Is that the case? Well, uh, that, that is not uh, really the, 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 the picture of what is happening. Some of these politicians, they don't even have a single cow. But uh, some who have cows are actually the main headers who have these cows. Because uh, the politician, if they have, they will be limited numbers, not, not, not the huge, not in, in, in big numbers as people are. Perceived, so the issue of cattle headers, yes, has affected uh, all of us uh, as people of Jongle and people of Bo, and also the people of uh, Equatoria, particularly in Eastern Equatoria and Central Equatoria. I'd like you to respond to the following statement, which also kind of reflects what you have also referred to in terms of what has happened within the Bo community, and the statement is by. David Dow, a member of the parliament of the Transitional National Legislative Assembly. This is what he said. Contrary to the views of highly polarized South Sudanese, whose mindset have been architect to believe in solely living in the ancestral land, it is not the wishes and interests of the people of Dinkabor to live in the land which is not part and parcel of their ancestral land. As an epicenter of the liberation struggle, it is crucial to note that the people of Bor, like the rest of South Sudan, were primarily scattered by the protracted civil war between the Islamic and Arabized regime of Khartoum 
and the Sudan's People's Liberation Movement Army, SPLM A, 1983 to 2005. What is your view of the remarks made by the MP, David Dadao? Yeah, he, he, he has stated clearly that is a correct statement. The, the main objective is to repatriate people who have stayed outside war for a number of years during the war. These are people actually who have settled around areas of uh, Numili, for instance, uh, Mogali, Winjibul, Tori, even Kapweta, that is in Eastern Equatoria. In Central Equatoria, areas of Ye, Kaya, most of people have settled there. And of late, starting from nine, uh, to 2005, uh, people also came, settled around Juba. So this, this, these are people actually who have not been, some of them have not even gone to war. When they came back after peace agreement, they found themselves in the capital. So, and they were soldiers, soldiers' families. Their connection actually with, 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 with war, maybe by elderly people, but the young people, some of them have not even seen war up to today. See, and as in other part of South Sudan, but in the central Equatorial and eastern Equatoria. So the situation as we are speaking has been polarized. And, 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 and politicians, of course, that are taken, taken advantage of this situation and made a lot of uh, uh, talk and speeches. So it, 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 it takes you back to 80s, early 80s or late 70s, of what was happening. So sometime, uh, some are talking out of context because it's not mainly issue about the cows. Uh, Sometimes it is attached like issues of land grabbing, all these things. Now, this cattle camp, the population of this cattle camp mainly are actually women, children. And sometimes you cannot even figure how a population of young children and women will just move to go and resettle and occupy because this is what politicians are saying. The influx of cows, these are people who want to come and settle in Equatorial. That's not correct. Because they are moving. They even rarely spend one week in one place. They continue moving. Somebody who is settling is not, is not mobile, will choose a place and come and settle. And the settlers are not really children and women. Because if you go into this cattle camp, the young men actually, the numbers are not, are not huge as people speculate. You see, these are people who are looking for grazing land, and once no grass, no water, they move. There's been concern because these cattle herders, they have modern weapons, and where are they getting such substantial amount of weapons? The communities in Eastern Korea are concerned that there are people within the Jonglai community who are supplying these cattle herders with the machine guns, with the ammunitions. And now with, the, with this taking place, of course, it's causing insecurity and fear among the farmers who survive on subsistence farming. So, and there's the lack of respect for the norms of the Eastern Equatorial communities. What is taking place right now is viewed as aggression by the Jonglei towards the Equatorians. The Junis, that, that, that picture is not, is not correct. Because for people of South Sudan to acquire arms is a long story. It started with the war, and small arms have been proliferating in the country, coming from all the directions. The enemy was forming militias all over, militia in Equatoria, in Upper Nile, in Barazan, and they have continued to supply arms into the country. These arms, for instance, let us talk about the peace we are, we are trying to enjoy it right now. You go to cantonment areas, the people who, who are fighting the government, now they are joining the cantonment areas without arms. They have been fighting using arms. Now where, where are these arms? Are actually within the country and are being carried by the population. Not only the cattle herders who have the arms, everybody have the arms. Even the, the attacks, 
which, which, which was made on cattle headers, where they lost 30 people, 17 children, five women, and, 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 and uh, uh, eight men. Now, can you think that the child of one year, two years, seven years, eight years can carry a gun? And they were attacked. Who attacked them? Were they farmers? That is the question. Because the people who attacked them, they used guns. So the issue who carries guns in South Sudan and who supplied them is a big question. Because everybody has a gun in South Sudan. Not only the cattle herders. And if you go to military hospital where they were admitted, children, majority of them children, they have sustained bullet uh, injuries. You see, it is not cattle herders who turn against their children and women to shoot at them. The attackers, let us assume they were farmers. So, in other words, farmers also have guns. Because in the beginning, the Catalans thought they were attacked by maybe rebels, but authorities of Eastern Equatoria denied that there are no rebels in Eastern Equatoria. So the question, who attacked them? The farmers or who? So in other words, everybody in South Sudan have a gun, except few, few of them who don't have. The governor of Eastern Equatoria State, Governor Louise Nobong issued a statement to UNMIS towards the end of February of this year about the volatile situation between the communities and the cattle herders. Governor Lobong stated, when we first saw the influx of cattle herders into our state, we understood that we have to make arrangements for them and designated land around Kidepo, Lafon, and Lopit to enable animals to graze as well as herders to temporarily settle. Governor Lobong went on to say, we understood that the floods had created a situation where we have to support neighboring communities. However, even our own cattle hoarders don't allow their animals to graze in Magui because the residents there are primarily farmers. If their crop cycle are destroyed, Eastern Equatoria will face a massive shortage of food. Despite all our efforts, herders are reluctant to leave farmlands. This is what has led to the volatile situation. Now, as the governor has stated, the cattle herders were going ahead and letting their cattle go and graze on farmlands, which was destroying crops that the farmers had planted within the state. Is it this creating a situation whereby it increases tension between the two communities because there's a lack of respect for the customs and the norms of the people of Eastern Equatoria? Yes, I appreciate what uh, Governor Luis Lobang was saying. He has wanted actually to see that there are no clashes. But the, the, the truth of the matter is, I don't know which part of South Sudan in January and, 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 and February, where people are starting actually to cultivate or harvest crops. I, I, I don't know which part of country of South Sudan. Yeah, is, let, let, me, let me make a point here. Okay, let's yeah. disregard the part of, okay, he made the statement in February. What yeah. if it's within the cultivation period? Because as you know, the population in Eastern Equatoria survive on subsistence farming. They plant yeah. their crops, the cassavas, the grains. And if the cattle herders are, are taking their cattle into the farmlands where the cattle go ahead and survive on it, what is the expectation in terms of the living condition of the population there? Yes, well, I'm, I'm coming to that point, uh, Junish. Mm -hmm. the, the point is when the governor went and visited the cattle camp and talked with, with, with cattle headers, they listened carefully to what the governor was saying, that if you want to go where you can graze, you cross in the, into areas where others have cows or cattle. Now, it is like, I don't know the, the, the geography of U, United States of America, but if somebody in Texas, for instance, and you ask them that people of Texas, they cultivate. That is an example. Why don't you cross to California? Because between Magui and, 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 and Capoeira, for instance, where people have cows, okay? 
or the other part of Torit, uh, east, east, east and south of Torit, say east of Torit, where the Latuka have cows. It's like crossing the, the state to other place. And, and, and in between, of course, there are always farmers. There are farmers. So the suggestion was in place, but there's no way you can actually, people are just robbing, ask them that you cross. They are the one who know where actually they can have water and grace, but we are not encouraging that they should, they should actually attack or go into some people farms. After governor talked to them, they decided to move back to central Equatorial. In the process of moving, that's the time they were attacked now. And you could see a cutter helder will always mind about his cows, about the people who are actually there. And sometimes they say that, okay, did the cattle headers who attacked? And there's no way children and women will go and make attack. You see? So while they were moving on the way they attacked, and this is why the children actually were lost, women were lost, majority of, of fatalities and casualties were actually children and women. You know, the same thing could be said about also the population in Eastern Equatory, the communities, peace and stability between the Jongle community, as well as members of the Eastern Equatoria, as well as the Central Equatoria is also very important. But also I would like to point out what has been happening to the population in Eastern Equatoria as well, in terms of the deaths that have been taking place. For instance, an old woman and her son were burned alive in their hut. This is a report that was received as well as a young mother and her two children were hanged inside their hut. Also, in addition, you hear incidences of farmers going to their farm to cultivate and then being killed in the process. So this has created a lot of instability within the communities and led to their displacement out of fear of the loss of life. We regret that situation as South Sudanese who are certain about what has taken place. And if we are human being, we will always sympathize with what has happened on both sides. And nobody in his right mind will encourage that the South Sudanese should, should degrade to that level of then targeting uh, vulnerable people, whether elderly or even children. We regret that as South Sudanese. Nobody would encourage that. But those circumstances, we should not be dealing in, 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 in what has happened. But can we mend the relations as people? That's, that incident should not repeat itself, South Sudan, by actually targeting most vulnerable part of our population. Whether you are attacked or you are making revenge is not acceptable. You see, to, to, to make a, a right. But again, the, the politicians are taking advantage of this situation to, to, to echo their agenda. Always, you know, agendas of politicians are very, are very tricky. And sometimes you cannot even understand why are they doing that. Right now, Eunice, we, we have already convinced our people that there's a need for them to leave the the areas of Eastern Equatoria, Central Equatoria, even Western Equatoria, to go back because you don't stay in a place where actually you are not wanted. You don't stay in a place where you are not respecting the norms of people, or the cultures of people. You don't stay in a place, you see, if you moving, roaming the, the bushes of South Sudan with your animals, with your children, your women, and you are not wanted. Because number one is to protect the life of these people. Seeing you are not able to protect them in those areas, you better get, get back to, to where you belong. And from there, it will give chance now to South Sudanese to think otherwise. That for us to have a country, we need certain things to happen. Cattle headers worldwide, I know they roam from area to area. The cows of Bagari from Northern Sudan, they come up to, up to South Sudan. The cows of Fulani from Nigeria, Chad, 
Central Africa, the rich men voters of South Sudan, and they grace that, but they are regulated by laws. Now, the challenge within the country is the regulation itself. Who regulates the movement of cows? In both traditionally, there are regulations because not everybody in board have animals or herd cows. Others are farmers, but there are laws to regulate. What will happen if a, if a, a herder uh, made his cow subsidy to, 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 to farming land and destroy farms? There are always fines and there are always regulations. The presence of the yeah. cattle herders has created the dispersion of the communities. Thousands of population in Magri County, for example, have been displaced. Some are now in Gumbo. Some are, I'm sure you've heard, are in Obama Village. Because of the fear and concern as the cattle herders are moving, that their life could be in jeopardy. So this is quite an issue that the Boer community needs to address very seriously. It is not only Boer community should address it. It is both communities plus the government. We have already asked the government to allow these people to move because they were saying that when we start moving, we're attacked. So it is better because on move, you are vulnerable. It is better we stay and protect ourselves. And we have been asking the government to give them safe passages so that they move. Now, that situation has started two days ago. And by the way, it's not. It, these were the only people who have left, who were left behind, because the, already the movement started in December, because we have been asking them that they should go back. And majority of these cattle camp now are, are actually north of Cuba. Only the one about 26 cattle camps who were left and the one who got attacked. But the process was started. The movement of animal is not, they don't, there is not movement like people moving. They need to, to move slowly, to graze while moving, water. Like now there is a challenge of water, you see? So them they are moving. The last group, I believe, at those areas of our road junction will be start moving today. And this has been witnessed then by the government that now the cattle headers are moving. I would like to go back That's to the point true. that you made in relations to, um, you know, the people from the Jongle community were dispersed because of the conflict that took place in 1992. It is important to note that it is not only the people from Jongle who faced hardship during the Civil War, who were also displaced during the Civil War. Other communities within the Southern Sudanese society were also impacted greatly by the war. They were displaced into refugee camps in Uganda, in Ethiopia, and some even went abroad. Of course, also there was a massive loss of life, as well as there were communities within different regions of Southern Sudan who also joined the SPLA as well. So these communities also played an active and important role in the liberation struggle, but yet they returned back to their communities. It is, it is, it is, it is unique because they are, the rest were not hit hard the way Jongle community in particular people of war were hit hard. You see, uh, they in split waters. which happened, yeah? In what terms? Because if you're talking about loss of life, it happened to all communities. If you're talking to, about in relations to fighting the enemy, the Sudan government, all communities contributed. Yes, all communities contributed, but the degrees are different. The degrees are different, and that is the reality which we need to, to accept. The movement of the people of war, for instance, going towards Equatoria, and even during those tough days, everybody crossed to Uganda or Kenya or Congo. It was in some time people of war were held at the border not to cross. And this was a part of, of a strategy actually applied by the movement because you know rebels cannot survive in a, in a situation where there's no population. The population of Eastern Equatorial has moved to, 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 to Uganda. And now rebels were actually pushed to that corners, particular areas of Eastern Equatorial and some part of Central Equatorial. 
So without population, as rebel, you cannot survive. So rebel actually were blocking the people of all moving across into Uganda in their numbers. And that is a, is, is a, is a worry strategy because if you don't have population around, you will not be able to fight. And as, as they say, rebel will never uh, survive if there are no people around. In other words, they say that population around the rebel is like fish in water. If you don't have people, rebel will not survive, survive because they will depend on these people, either food or even getting manpower to fight the war. And this is a reality that people of war have been doing this. Others did not experience what people of war have experienced. This is a reality we need to be said, and we should not go around it. And they are still continuing paying the results or, or, or the, the, the results or complication of the conflict dearly more than another population. That is a reality, which we should say. So right now we are thinking, and again, when the war ended in 2005, there was still conflict in Jongle. All of us know this. Jungle has never been safe up to today. Conflict has continued. All the rebel groups, it is started in Jungle. The war of 83 started in Jungle. And up to today, there are still rebels in Jungle. You see, compared to other parts of the country. At least others have peace for, for a certain time or a certain period, but Jungle has never tested peace up to today. There have been concerns among some population in Eastern Equatoria that the cattle herders had a long-term plan of trying to displace the population within the state, primarily the Madi and the Acholi tribes, and drive them back to the refugee camps in Uganda. Was that part of the strategy of the cattle herders? Uh, that, that's not correct. Uh, nobody will want to take somebody's land. And you know, the war we fought, we fought was actually to liberate ourselves from the enemy. What about That's in the thing. case of Numule, whereby you find some members of the Jongle community occupying large portions of the land? These are the people who have settled there. And it's one of the challenges now we are facing. Uh, when you had a place like Windy Kombu, where actually there's a training center, and, the, and the, the soldiers who are there, you know, uh, as someone who is, who, is, who, is, who is not used to farming, or someone who is not able to use pen, will not want to use pen. They will use the means they see better they can do. Like recently, the army who are airing cows there were attacked and killed, officers were killed. You see, this, this, they are there not because they are, they are from Jongoli, they are there because there are actual government employees who are working there, but they're having cows. There are people who were in Tori last year. They are having cows, and they were taken more than 1,700 heads were taken. Recently, Marco Makwe, the Minister of Information, as well as Governor Louise Lobong of Eastern Equatoria, held a meeting. Here is what took place. And we agreed that uh, that the, the the that the cattle owners should be should move immediately to Bor, and that uh, the host community, on the other hand, should not also uh, should not also attack the the cattle owners while moving on the way. This is in order to give them free access so that they are not interrupted and they should uh, continue immediately. We also agreed that there should be a, a dialogue between the two communities so that other issues are st stretched out, not uh, because of anything, but other than to maintain good relations and neighborly uh, relations between the two, the two uh, communities. Uh, uh, the other issues will be discussed in the in the dialogue that we have agreed upon, and the dialogue will be 
the, the time for the dialogue will be fixed as soon as the cattle begin to move out from there uninterrupted. This meeting was actually initiated by the governor of Eastern Equatoria with me to bring political leaders, both from the uh, board community uh, and political leaders from Eastern Equatoria, to discuss the ongoing uh, conflict in Eastern Equatoria between the cattle herders and, and the raiders, and also the host community of Magui. As uh, Honorable Michael McQuay has put it, we have discussed and we have agreed as leaders to, uh, to stop the ongoing raiding and killing and revenge on our people and to continue to make sure that our people enjoy peace and, and stability and uh, neighborliness because uh, Bor is Bor community, our neighbors, as Eastern Equatoria, and we have been together with them. And we agree that uh, from now onward, political leaders from Eastern Equatoria assist the government of Eastern Equatoria to talk and synthesize the community, the host community, to stop uh, attacking these people. And they, on their hand, to continue to talk to their people to move immediately to evacuate uh, the area of Magui. So this we have taken upon ourselves. The leaders, political leaders from Eastern Equatoria will support the government of Eastern Equatoria to talk to the community and particularly the, the, the Magui community not to allow any other cattle raiders to pass through their territory and raid the cattle. And allow... Nobody wants to live always in war. You see, people of jungle and Paril, people of war have been in war. We don't want that. We need to settle. And to settle means that we have to get back to our homes. Wealth could be acquired any time. Even if you lose it today, tomorrow you can get it. So, but you don't get it in the expense of others. Will not true. be called will not be called a blessed wealth if you get it through doing other things are not good to your neighbors, to your people. So we agree that as people, one of the people of war going back to war, regardless of what the situation is. And we believe that we are saying this not with, with bad heart, because we have that empathy to our people. We love our people, we love our country. If there are few astray in doing bad things, then we should not be lumped as people of war. But people of war, the culture are known to be good culture, to be actually willing and, and, and welcome to the people of South Sudan. We've been joined on the program by Dr. Agok Kualtir, the chairman of the Bor County community based in Juba. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you, Junis Mala. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page at Sunrise Media.